Hey guys, Ike here from Mike'sOutdoors.com. I'm here today to do another video in my tips series. Um, this one is on calling. And I'm not going to necessarily recommend a certain type of calling or a certain uh, type of call. But I'm going to talk to you about the different things that you're going to see out there. The different, and really the timing that I've found works best for some of this stuff. Now take into consideration, um, this is in southwest Missouri. Um, in the Midwest, so the timing of some of this could be a little bit different for you guys. Um, so I've got a couple cu couple calls here, but I'm gonna start out with talking to you guys just about the basic grunt call. Uh, the basic grunt call, you can go to any place that sells hunt stuff, and you're gonna find five or six different kinds uh, of grunt calls or more, and they're all gonna be good for certain applications or something like that. I like ones that have um, the ability to make several different calls. Uh, I don't even know which one this one is. I'm pretty sure this is a Rod Benson call. Uh, I just can't remember what it is right now, but pretty sure this is a Rod Benson call. And you can see it's got a slider, and you can slide that and you can make different tones. Um, one of my favorite ones and ones that you're going to be able to find probably a little more easily than this Rod Benson call is this one right here. And you can tell by looking at this, this is an old, this sucker's every bit of uh, 10 years old at least. Uh, this is a True Talker uh, by, I believe, by Hunter's Specialty or something like that. And it's the same way. It's got a, a read inside here, and you can push down on this, and you can make your different calls. So, there's a lot of different calls you can make. One, you can make just not push nothing. And that's a just a buckler, uh, a butt grunt, a mature butt grunt. And you can see big difference between the two calls. So, I'm just going to stick with one here, and I'm going to stick with this one right here because it's a little bit easier to use. Um, and show you the different calls. So, we got a mature buck call. Very deep call. Um, very raspy sound to it. This is a buck grunt, a young buck grunt. You can see it loses a little bit of its rasp. Um, doe crawl. And there's the cat. <laughs> and lastly we got a fawn and you can get a little bit more shrill than that with the fawn to me this one here sounds a little bit more like a yearling so it's not quite as deep as the doe not quite as 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 loud so those are the different calls you're going to use and each one of them is going to have its different uses um, and so we're going to talk about that Early in the year, um, as deer are are just on a feeding pattern, they're not any breeding going on or anything like that. Early season, it's never really a bad idea to, to grunt. Um, now, the type of grunting that you're going to be doing can can be a bad idea. I I never use a mature buck grunt uh, unless I'm trying to make another buck mad, and that usually only works during the rut. So I don't ever use a mature buck grunt because if there's a doe over there, or a younger buck, or something like that, you may end up scaring them off because they may hear that buck, mature buck grunt, and they may run off. So early in the year, I always use just the fawn grunt or just the the doe grunt. I mean, and I don't put any kind of inflection in it or anything like that, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And this could be a long video. I'm just warning you right now. Um, I just hit it basically. I put my hand over the end of the th end of the the tube, and I just I just blow. And that's about it. And I'll do that in the early season. That's basically just one deer communicating to another deer. If there's another deer within hearing distance, it basically says, hey, I'm right here. So you may get a deer that's curious in the early season, and she may come over or he may come over and check you out and see what's going on and maybe offer you a shot. Never a bad idea to grunt, but it is a bad idea to grunt, use the wrong grunt, and it is a bad idea to grunt and call too much. Deer are not really vocal animals. You you hardly ever hear one or see one grunt. Um, at least I haven't. And, and I've now in breeding season I've seen a few make some noise, but I've hardly ever just seen a, a deer just walk out and start grunting. So that's what I do in the early season. You can change it just by changing some of these. You can change the, the read or change the direction. 
but that's it I'll do that maybe an hour hour and a half later I might hit it again and that's that's just about it so that's my early season call and that's pretty much the only one I use early season and I don't use it very often sometimes in early season if you see a deer that's not quite coming your way you can do that you can try some different calls and maybe you can entice them to come over just main thing is not to do it too much because you gotta remember deer are really not vocal animals so you get to going out there and just a deer is probably not gonna gonna believe you're another deer so early season just keep it nice calm you know good good amount of time in between each uh, calling session now as the pre-rut starts which you'll know what the pre-rut is if you've watched my other video about the last couple weeks of of uh, October first couple weeks in November around here there's basically that month right before the rut it really starts getting hot and heavy the bucks are out cruising and they're looking so then I'll switch up from my doe to actually switching up to my younger buck and what I'm trying to do there is I'm not really trying to start a fight or make one think there's a fight over there what I'm really doing when I just use this is trying to let that other buck know hey there's a young buck in my territory and the reason I use a young buck is because if it's a mature buck he's gonna come over and he's gonna he's gonna try to take that other deer and get him out of his territory and if it is a younger buck he's not gonna be intimidated by it he may come over and see what's going on so um, and my point mainly is just to see deer. I mean, if I see a younger buck, spike, something like that, I'm not going to shoot him. I'm going to pass on him. But, hey, if I can see some deer, who knows, you know, what may come over there and what may happen just when you get some deer underneath you. So, um, those last couple weeks of October, I'll start hitting that. And I'll do that a little bit more often than I, I do in early season. Um, I'll hit that maybe once every 30, 45 minutes and just nothing more than this. And you can see there I could use my hand and I can make a little bit of tone variation in it. You don't want to do that, but you see how you can change the tone. So, at that point I'm really just trying to trying to get a buck to come over and look and see what's going on by using another buck and I may even throw in I'll throw in that younger buck and I may slide it to my doe call to make that buck think hey there's a young buck over there and there's a doe with him I want to go over there and check that out and see what's going on so those are the calls that I'll use in that early season when the pre ruts really going on not early season but early rut stages when the ruts really um, not in full swing yet, but really starting to uh, starting to kind of pick up a little bit. So I'm just trying to get something curious to see what's going on. Now, in the rut, I'll use every call that I can on this thing. I will use. I like my favorite is to use a young buck call and to use this right here, which is the Primos can. And this is a doe and estrus call. And what I'll do is I'm trying to make a, a mature buck think that there's a younger buck in his area and there's a doe in estrus and this young buck is chasing her around. So I'll do just some basic grunt and I'll mix it up in with some doe and estrus calls. And I may spread them out by 30 seconds, a minute, you know, some time like that. And I'll change it up back and forth. But the estrus call basically is just going to be this. Sorry, that's my dryer. <laughs> That's going to be it for the estrus call. You can do it a little bit slower. You can get different kinds of cans and everything like that. So I'm going to hit that with the estrus call. And now, when we get into this stage, if you've ever seen a buck breed a doe or tend a doe or chase a doe, they make a lot of different noises when they're doing that. And what they'll do is they'll make a basic grunt. I'm sorry. They'll make a basic grunt. I had in my mind already the next grunt I was going to make. And it'll make what I call a buck click. And when they're chasing a doe, I've seen them, they'll get their head down and they'll actually grunt with every step that they take. And it's actually just a real short grunt. I call it a buck click because that's what it sounds like basically. So that's the noise that he'll make when he's doing that. And um, a basic grunt, 
with a little bit of that in there and you the butt click and then you throw this to, that's what I've heard deer do when they're really close to getting breeding now a, a tending grunt I don't even know exactly if it's a tending grunt is what this is called but I've heard bucks that are actually with does and when they're actually in the process of doing it they'll they'll get a, they'll get a little more, more passionate to it because you gotta think their body's in motion they're actually in the process of breeding and I've heard a buck on top of a doe the whole time he was doing it um, I kind of felt a little weird but he was actually putting some passion into his grunts and the whole time he was doing this going uh, let me make sure I got this set right going. That's what it sounded like, so kind of felt a little voyeuristic watching that and listening to it. But anytime that I'm in the woods and anytime you're in the woods, if even if you don't get a shot on a deer, pay attention to their body language, pay attention to what they're doing, and you'll learn from it. I didn't get a shot on that deer, but I got to watch him come out. He fought with another buck. He chased that doe all around that, that hilltop that I was sitting on. And then he finally got up on her and he, he pinned her down and bred her. So it was a really, really cool experience and a hunt that I'll remember the rest of my life. And I didn't even get to kill. I didn't even loose an arrow that day. So um, those are some of the basic calls that you're going to run into. Late season, you shift back into just the basic here I am grunts. Uh, mature buck grunts. I do use the mature buck grunts some, but mostly if I've already spotted another mature buck and I'm trying to make him mad. Um, just throwing it out there blind I don't use a mature buck grunt a whole lot because I don't want to scare off something and I've noticed that I've seen bucks on on breeding when a big buck come in I seen a smaller buck chasing a doe and this big buck came in and as soon as he hit the top of the field that little buck he come in there grunting and he that little buck just exited I mean he was gone so I don't that's why I don't use a mature buck a whole lot but this combination right here when the rut's going on is deadly I've called in quite a few deer with this combination just a, a young buck grunt with the doe and estrus get that buck click in there make it sound like he's really pursuing her and then even get to the point and put a little passion in it where it sounds like he's actually in the process of, of breeding that doe and you'll get you'll get some reaction if a, if a mature buck hears it he's gonna come over to see what's going on so and that, like I said I'm not a world champion caller this is just I've had some good luck doing this this is my system this is what I use um, the next thing we're going to talk about is rattling. Now, you've got several different things, ways of rattling, basically. You've got real antlers. You can get synthetic ones. You can get them fake ones or whatever. Some of them sound pretty good and some of them don't. Um, and you've got bags. And I care, I've got both. I like both of them. Both of them are good for different reasons and bad for different reasons. Um, carrying these around can get kind of tough sometimes, just having these things strapped to your bag. Now, I like carrying them because this is the first mature buck that I ever killed. And I, more people have seen this buck. I say mature. He was about four and a half years old. Um, and Oklahoma deer, just not a good good genetic. But I was, I'm really proud of this deer still to this day. He was my first mature buck. And um, more people have seen this rattling horns than have seen my deer on my wall, except, in, you know, the ones in the video. Um, and it's a nice way of... of to me honoring the deer because I carry this deer with me everywhere some of my my greatest hunts including the hunt you know of, of harvesting them I remember every time I pick these things up so there's a lot of sentimental value attached to a set of antlers like this excuse sorry for the dryer again um, so I'm really proud of this set of antlers and there's a, a, a good story behind how I got these and a good story behind uh, some of the days I spent in a tree stand with these I rattled up a buck um, just a few years after with these when we were in Texas I played with some deer with these and just uh, a lot of good stories behind them um, This one not so much sentimental value. So I like the real antlers and I still carry them I actually last year was first year. I didn't carry them. And I kind of kind of felt bad So I'm, I'm probably gonna carry these again this year. So uh, the other real advantage to it, you know is and what I do when I rattle with these is I'll actually take these and the tree that I'm in, you have to think realistically about this. You have to use some common sense when it comes to this. Um, you have to pi almost picture the scenario in your head um, of what is going to happen and how these bucks are going to hook up and make it sound as realistic as possible. I see a lot of people on TV that 
I don't know if they're doing it for real or not, but apparently they've got a lot more active bucks up there than I've got down here. And maybe you guys do too, but I have never in my life seen deer do this. I've never seen deer fight and do that. Not in real life, not on video, never. Um, real deer do a lot more pushing with their antlers than they do shaking. And I've seen a lot of TV guys and it just irks me because they're sending the wrong message to people who don't know a whole lot about calling. And these people go out and they, well, this guy on TV did that and he rattled in a big old monster buck. Well, I don't know how, how or why they do that. Maybe it works in their area, but it dang sure don't work around here. So um, get online, talk to some people and if you're a new guy, or, or get out there and like I said, just watch. And you're going to see it eventually. Uh, if you're lucky, you'll see it. Most of the time when deer fight, when bucks fight, they lock their antlers up. And you may hear a little of that, but if you watch them in video or in life, they are actually pushing back and forth a whole lot more than what they're actually doing that they're not sitting there twisting their head around doing all that they lock their head up and they're pushing it back and forth back and forth just like two elk you know they've got their antlers locked up they're pushing back and forth now when they are locked up they'll move around a little bit and they'll make some noise of course but not much more than that you gotta think the whole time they're pushing back and forth and trying to get position and then, you know, they may, uh, so they may separate and they may come back together. And there's one of the keys too right there. Listen to the, they don't always crash together. Initially, they'll crash together. And sometimes when they get separated, they'll crash together. But a lot of the times, if you watch the video of them, they'll separate some and you'll hear this. And then they'll come together. And then when they get locked up, they're pushing back and forth. Another thing you hear a lot of is their bases rubbing together because their antlers aren't actually like this. Their antlers are base to base. So that's another good sound you can throw in there. And another thing you can do to add realism is you can think these two bucks, they're probably pretty good size, pretty good amount of body weight moving around. They're going to be moving back and forth, back and forth. And they're going to be hitting trees and stuff like that. So get some, if you're in a tree with some leaves, get some leaf action in there. You know, run over to the tree that you're on and do that. You know, before you start fighting, scrape that tree down a little bit and grunt a little bit. Um, and, and make it sound as realistic as possible. So just real quick, I'm going to show you what I do. This is how I would set up a sequence if I was in a tree. I would start out by with my rattling antlers and I would actually scrape the tree that I'm in and maybe if I can find a branch hit that branch and twist that branch a little bit and just sit there and scrape that tree and make it sound like a buck making a rub and what I'm trying to do is, is get another deer to think hey there's a buck in my territory he's over there making a rub I'm gonna go see what's going on so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna start and I usually use a hands-free grunt call but I don't have that in here so I'll, I'll make a few grunt calls and at this time, I'm going to use my mature or my uh, young buck call. And the whole time I'm scraping against that tree, stopping and grunting. So, in my head, there's one buck there. He's he's marking his territory. Another buck comes in, sees him, and they're getting ready to hook it up. So, before they hook it up, they're going to grunt back and forth with each other. So, do a little bit of grunting, and I may even take my antlers and and bash a few limbs around with it these are just like two old prize bulls you know or two men they're gonna walk around they're gonna strut around and show each other how big they are and how bad they are before they actually hook it up and what I'll generally do the first time is is uh, I won't crash them together the first time what I'll do the first time is just tickle those things together real lightly I may even that's two bucks just like us just like fighters if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna hook it up with you I'm gonna fill you out first before I just rush in there and let you punch me in the face four or five times so I'm gonna I'm gonna just they're just they're feeling each other out right now so all right they've exchanged words they felt each other out a little bit it's time to get it on at this point crashing those things together so this is how my sequence would go
and you will smash a finger or two trying to lock them up on the bottom. And that's about it. I'll do that for 15 to 20 seconds, maybe as long as 30 seconds first time around. I'll wait 30 seconds to a minute, tinkle them together again, and the whole time I'm, I'm doing this, I'll have my hands-free grunt call in my mouth going... So you can see there, I'm making quite a bit of noise, and I'm, I'm just gently moving them back and forth. Like I said, I see these guys on TV doing this all the time, and literally, I'm not exaggerating a bit. I love this man to death, and I hate to talk bad about him, but Roger Raglan has got to be the worst rattler that I've ever heard. And Roger, if you see this video, you're awesome, and I'm sorry, because he rattles like this. You're horrible at rattling, Roger. And no one, please don't send this to Roger, because I really don't want him to think I'm, I'm talking bad about him. But if you watch a Roger Raglan video, he just goes... And then, of course, he's Roger Raglan, and he's you know, big buck comes in there, and he kills a deer. But it's never worked like that for me. Roger's the luckiest guy on earth, or he, maybe he is a master rattler, and I just don't know it. Because that has never sounded realistic to me. And I try to sound as realistic as possible. So that's basically that. I'll cover this bag real quick. With the bag, uh, you know, you can you can scrape it up and down on the tree and try to grab a hold of a branch and do some stuff like that to make some noise. And then a bag sequence, I'd have the grunt call. So pretty much the same with that, you know you can you can really get after it with the bag too. But you know, try to match the sounds that the deer are making in your area. Try to match the, the grunt calls that they're making and the the sounds of two bucks that they're making. If you're hunting an area where there's 120, 130 inch deer and that's about as big as they get, then you don't want to sound like 280 or 200 inch deer just going at it. You know, you want to sound like the deer that are in your area. If you've got an area that's got 200 inch deer, uh, send me an email and an invite and I will come out to your place and I'll help you harvest one. I'd be more than happy to do that. So um, match the sounds of the animals in your area and match the realistic sound of animals. Don't just go off what these guys on TV are, are doing because I hate to say but some of that stuff's staged. Uh, some of the stuff they may not even have rattled that time but just for some action it could have been a simple like, uh, hey there's a deer. Well, let's make it a little more exciting. Let's rattle this thing in, you know. So, um, I hate to say it, but that's the way TV works. You know, you got to make it more, a little more exciting. So, calling in deer is absolutely a blast. It's, it's entertaining uh, when you're sitting out there and you're bored, you know, and it's really cool. I've called in a few bucks and, and a few deer in my life. And uh, last year, I missed out on a deer. He was a big nine point, and I got video of him. But it was just, man, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um... I was sitting up there rattling and grunting and I had my grunt in my mouth and actually had this grunt in my mouth, the green one, and uh, didn't have the lanyard around my neck and had this bag in my hand and was sitting there rattling that thing and wasn't paying no attention and I look over and he's sitting there watching me. He'd come up, I just wasn't set up right and he, he was sitting there watching me and I had that grunt just hanging out of my mouth and couldn't just spit it out and didn't have my bow in my hand. He walked past me and walked out. Well, when he walked out, I got a little bit more positioned and got a little bit more ready and did it again. And he turned around. He actually came charging back in. And this time, he charged straight past my stand. And when I had my bow out, I actually pulled on him. But he got behind some stuff and wouldn't stop. And I didn't have a call in my mouth. So I had to let down, get a call out, called to him again. And this time, he came to my stand and walked straight away from me. So all I had was a butt shot. So we went through the whole process again. Finally, on the fourth time, he turned around, went out, and gave me a shot. 
But as soon as he got out, he, he walked around, and I thought he was going to give me a shot. He got straight down and of me and smelled me and blew and was gone. But I tell you what, it was 30 seconds of some of the most exciting hunt. Well, maybe a couple minutes. But it was some of the most exciting hunting that I have ever done. And after it was all said and done, I was disappointed that I hadn't killed a deer, but it was awesome. It was awesome to see him just charging in there. And to have him come back two or three times was just, man, it was an experience. And I tell you what, guys, if you're hunting just for the kill, sometimes not getting the kill uh, and watching some of the things these deer do and some of the things that happen can be just as exciting and just as fun as harvesting one. And sometimes it can be more. Sometimes I've, I've seen some stuff happen that just was better than killing deer, you know. I had some come in and actually laid down right underneath my tree stand. It was late in the air. I already had a full freezer. And I was able to just sit there and watch them for like an hour and a half. I finally had to get up and scare them off because I wanted to go home. I was freezing my butt off. So um, it's really exciting calling in deer. And to be able to call in a deer and harvest one, it, it's really a, a very cool thing. So I hope this, this video helped you guys out. Um, like I said, don't necessarily go off of the TV and uh, what those guys are saying. And don't necessarily go off of what I'm saying because some of this stuff may not be accurate for your area. Um, but try to find some videos of deer. Watch them fight. Listen to them grunt. Listen to them call, you know. Uh, try to talk to local people who have hunted for years and years. You know, them old timers are a wealth of knowledge in your area, and they can talk to you about grunting and, and calling and doing things like that. And if they don't, if they've never called, ask them about what they've seen. Have you ever heard a deer grunt? What did he sound like? You know, have you ever seen two deer fight? How did they sound? So hit up those old timers, find some videos on YouTube, and see what you can find and try to replicate that because that's. That's the best example that you're going to have. So, appreciate you guys watching this video. Appreciate all the support that I get on YouTube. And be sure to check us out at IkesOutdoors.com. Thanks, guys.